I'm Jay Boisseau, I'm the CEO of Visius, and I'm here with Dr. Minnie Callon of the Dell Medical School. She was the Vice Dean of Strategy and Partnerships, and Minnie is, this is her first South by Southwest, is that right? It's actually my second. I came in 2007. I was part of a panel wow. called uh, Digital Ethnorati. But 2007 was a very was different a time for us. Very Austin. different. Yeah. yeah. So it's grown a lot since then. It's probably at least twice as big as Absolutely. It was since and then. of course, there was no health or med tech uh, expo right. at the time. So, so, what do you think, first of all, of this health and med tech expo? What has been your, what has been your biggest impression so far from it? I think it's a fantastic start. Um, so certainly more than has been there in the past. Um, I feel like there is a, a, a great South by Southwest type of vibe, which I love. Um, actually, I met somebody from uh, uh, Pfizer um, uh, who's great, but, but she was commenting on how different the feeling was here than a traditional uh, health or even health tech conference. She wasn't sure how she felt about it, but um, uh, from my perspective, I think what we're seeing are the seeds of what happens when a South by Southwest culture infuses with the uh, sort of health and health tech culture. Yeah, I was wondering how you would perceive that because you, you go, I'm sure, to lots of medical and health conferences and South by is its own beast. There's nothing really like it. I've been coming to it for years and it's, it's creative and it's energetic, but it's weird and apolitical and everything. It's, so it's, it's, a, it's a lot of different energies here. So have you enjoyed meeting a lot of the creative folks here? I have not met enough of the creative folks who are not creative health folks. So let's not put artificial boundaries, Jay, between creative and health, because we're here to say that health can be very, very creative as well. But I right. know what you mean. Well, and I, and I assume you're going to use that as a lead in to the new Design Institute. Why not? Yes. Although design is <laughs> but one area for creativity yeah. and health. But yeah, we're very excited to launch the, the new Design Institute with founding directors Stacey Chang and Beto Lopez. Um, they uh, come from IDO, the big design firm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, uh, it's been a while uh, with design and industry now, I'd say 10 plus years, where people have gotten more comfortable with the role of design in the health and health tech industry. However, in academia, it's still a very new thing. Um, so I don't know that there is another design institute at a medical school anywhere else in the country or I've in not, the world. I've not heard of one, and I think the article said it was the first, so let's I'll just roll it. with that. Yeah. Let's assume it's the first. <laughs> That's great. So how do you see the health and med tech uh, expo growing next year? Do you have any ideas for it? Uh, I don't have specific ideas, but I, what I do know is that we are very interested in sitting down with the South by Southwest folks and really thinking about what it means to have a, a health uh, pathway uh, with the medical school in town. I don't know what it looks like. I'm sure the Design Institute folks will be very excited about thinking about what it means to design a novel kind of conference. Um, South by Southwest is different from any other uh, conference I've been to. For example, uh, one of the um, uh, early stage investors that I met uh, here, uh, I, asked, I asked him what he'd seen that he was interested in. This was a couple of days back and he'd just come. But he actually, uh, he said, well, you know, I see a few things in health, but when I come, I love the fact that South by Southwest is different and, and he goes to see other stuff. And he says it's really fun to actually see things that are orthogonal to my expertise because that gives me ideas that I would never ever get just in, in a conference right. that was only focused on my own area. So I, I would love to leverage that sort of intermingling of, of industries and domains in, our, in the next iterations of what health looks like at South by Southwest. Yeah, there's a lot of good talks here on big data analytics. And some of that's, of course, going to bleed over into healthcare and new, new techniques for healthcare. There's great talks on urban planning, which I went to, which I wouldn't have thought, you know, and the talks would have crossed over into health, but they began to. People are starting to see how different neighborhoods and the quality of what goes on in those neighborhoods have impacts on children's health, for example. So, it's, yeah, it's a good conference to get out and try some new things. In fact, Hugh Forrest, the director of South By, says one of your primary goals should be go to talks, go to talks that you know nothing about. He said, if you go to all the things that you're an expert in, you probably know as much as the speakers, but go to other talks and, and get new ideas. And so South By Interactive has really embraced that, right? It has. It has ideas from all over, and they've even added comedy tracks, sports tracks, science talks. That's health what and I want. I would Expo. love a comedy slash health track. What does a that comedy look like? slash health track? Because health is so serious, we need humor to lighten lighten our approach to health. So um, that's one of the things we're going to need to think about. <laughs> well, you <laughs> should you should suggest that to Hugh. I'm not quite sure <laughs> what I see as the speakers for that, but that, that's interesting. So so tell me a little bit about being here in Austin in a technology city and how excited you are about being able to work with the aspects of not just the university but the tech sector because we're a great creative city in many ways but we're a great technology city. 
we are a great technology city, but I did come from San Francisco. Um, so it's that not was just. Good too, yeah. So it's not just. But I say that not not to um, uh, to say nothing less uh, than Austin. But the point is that it's not just pure strengths in technology by the number of companies or the size of the companies. What I'm really moved by here is the excitement uh, to to contribute and drive a new vision for Austin. Mm -hmm. That kind of coming together is what. I have to say, you, you really don't find as much in the San Francisco, um, as, as fantastic as San Francisco is. And I, you know, I'm a San Francisco and I've lived there more than 20 plus years. Now I'm an Austinite and here I'm excited about what new things we can do because I think for certain kind of change, you really need to come together in different ways. And I don't just mean this in a touchy feely, we just need to hold hands, but really ask how does, for example, the chip industry complement some of the biosensor expertise that we have both in, in, in small companies and in, and, and in the university, and how does that complement our new ways of thinking about the Internet of Things, and how does that complement some of the innovations we're doing in health? That kind of layering in of traditionally disparate industries is what I think Austin could be exceptional at. And like you said, you come from a place that's a great tech city and also a great biotech city. Now you're coming to one that is also a great tech city, but its strength has been more in semiconductor. And so the biotech sector here, there's roughly 150 companies, but many of them are, are small and haven't made their name yet. How do you feel about, uh, how are you going to help stimulate that biotech sector in Austin? It's a great question. A um, couple of things. So number one, uh, we're certainly going to really um, amplify the work that's already being done at the university that feeds the biotech sector. Uh, and so, so what probably wasn't there as much at the university was, a, was an organizing force to take the great research, identify what it needs to actually move ahead and translate and become a, uh, become a health product. We've got programs that we tested out in San Francisco that are ready to scale across the multiple schools here, and we'll use those to start getting new ideas out, um, uh, out into the economy here in Austin. But it, other than that, we do have some real needs here that we're going to have to uh, collaborate and brainstorm with our other uh, leaders in Austin. So for example, we do need uh, wet lab incubator space. Right. Now, our, on the one hand, we don't have what we need today, uh, so, but every weakness is a strength. And so this, the opportunity, I think, is to step back, learn from the experiences of other incubators and ask, what, what's the uniquely Austin incubator look like? What does it mean to have an incubator with wet lab space that has a, is a completely different breed that sort of invites in, for example, um, IP from chip companies? I mean, is there, do you design it differently? Uh, is there a new model for pre-competitive collaboration? that changes how we deal with intellectual property. This is um, where I was excited about the Pecan Street project here in energy and to say what can we learn from other projects that have been done here in other industries where they've created some kind of semi-protected space allowing for a new kind of collaboration. So those are the opportunities that um, are available to us as we come up with infrastructure that we do need in this city like incubator space and, and frankly like funding. So let me talk about that collaboration for a second and I want to ask you Culturally, coming from California to Austin, have you noticed any kind of cultural difference in terms of willingness to collaborate, willingness to sort of open their arms and say, hey, come on in, let's have dinner, let's talk about this? Well, you're lucky that I'm going to say yes, I have seen a difference, because what if I said no? <laughs> yeah, I, I knew the answer was yes. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and you know, it ranges, actually. I have to say, one of the, one of the groups that I've found exceptionally helpful um, is actually our own system, UT system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and not to say that UC was, was bad, but UC was distant in a way that the University of Texas system um, I found to be really collaborative um, and, and very pragmatic. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't find any um, errors. Um, there, there is no sense that one is, one is up high and the other is but a mere school. I find that opportunities flow pretty, uh, pretty fluidly. So co from coming from my experience in California, it's actually been fantastic to feel not only are we a school in a fantastic university, but to feel like we are a university in a tremendous system with people facilitating the system that are really helping to make the whole get bigger. So that's been fantastic. Otherwise, again, every weakness has a strength. We're a small right. community here. But on, on the flip side, that community has been exceptional in both reaching out or when reached out to, to immediately get on board and say, well, sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't agree. But what we all do um, agree on is that there's an opportunity here and we should figure out ways to leverage each other's strengths. So that's been tremendous. So we've talked a little bit about the strengths of UT and the UT system and some of the opportunities in Austin. 
So I heard a previous talk where you talked about creating an infrastructure here in Austin and using it as sort of a micro ecosystem and really trying to change healthcare here and leveraging sort of the, I don't want to say the smallness, but the finite size of an ecosystem like Austin. So can you talk a little bit about that? Thank you, yeah. So that, that I think is the crux of the opportunity we have here. And, and I would say it's, it's a strategy. So what I mean by that is, if you're taking on health and improving health in this country, that's a huge problem. And you have many different pathways to do that. One pathway, as I mentioned in my talk, was that you take on national policy. You take on legislation. You take on changing the system through all of these other means. Um, and I think that is really important. Our particular strategy is to focus, though, on creating a large-scale demonstration. Some people have called it city as a lab. I call it city as a platform, a platform that then allows for innovation to, to flourish um, against that platform. Mm -hmm. Think about tech platforms in the same sure. way, with some standard operating sort of interfaces uh, that allow people to plug and play and to validate their, their innovations. That's the opportunity I think that we have um, here in Austin um, that I'm very excited about. And the key piece there is to be able to seed care innovation within which technology innovation can plug in. The problem with technology innovation today is that it happens against a broken system. So if you're innovating, you can keep innovating as much as you want, but if the base system is still a big behemoth and broken, then you're only gonna get incremental change. However, if you can take pieces of that and nimbly create little reformed systems of care, redesigned systems of care, and, and as those are being designed, expose them to technology opportunities, then both can grow together, right. and you have a chance to really um, amplify the impact of uh, technology innovation and health. Great. Well, so one of the things that, when I used to talk to my friends at UT about before you were hired, I said, please make sure, this is exciting, we're starting a new med school, please don't try to do it the same way as Harvard, the same way as all these great med schools, because they have many years of, of a head start, and they have momentum, and they've been doing this for a long time. But technology, it, it's not the sole part of the answer, but it provides a means of doing it differently. Um, I told a friend of mine this who's affiliated with a, a supercomputing institute in Australia, and I said I was talking to folks at UT about doing a different kind of medical school, one that embraced computing and data, and I made the mistake of saying, I, I really want it to be a 21st century medical school, not a 20th med century medical school. And he said, Jay, y'all will be doing good if it's not a 19th century medical school, especially in computing and data. So can you talk a little bit about how you might integrate computing and data even into the curriculum so that trained physicians are more comfortable interpreting statistics from pharmaceutical studies and actually maybe more uh, confident in executing such statistical analyses? Um, that's a great question. Uh, so there's a lot of plans to infuse you know, modern ways of leveraging technology to do care, starting from very simply the fact that today uh, medical school students don't have to be trained to remember everything. Uh, that, that, that equation has changed and so we are thinking about students in a world where information is going to be cheap and it's, it's more their analysis and their thinking that has to be emphasized. So that really infuses through the um, entire uh, curriculum. But I think even you hit upon a bigger piece which is one part of the big Austin experiment is going to be to, it has to be, to radically improve the data and technology infrastructure across the board in the city. Yes. So if we want to train physicians, young physicians, we want to, we want to have trainees that are leveraging data to improve health at the scale of a population. Well, you're going to need data at the scale of a population and you're going to need it easily accessible in a customer friendly way. You go in, there are a few hurdles to cross, and you can have the data you need while protecting uh, privacy issues of, of patients. We all want to get to that across the country, but for mm -hmm. this experiment to work, we need it. So that is going to be one of our big challenges and opportunities to demonstrate a new model for accumulating and leveraging the data from the population to improve health. Great. So there was a big announcement last week from Apple, um, most valuable company on the planet, decided they were going to do something real noble. And they, they announced a research kit and it's open source software, and it allows you to volunteer for studies. And so actually, I already did this, I volunteered for one of the studies, um, but I'm, I'm always an early adopter on things like that. But it turns out there are a lot of people willing to contribute to this, and 
the numbers for their initial applications, I think they had 11,000 volunteers for one, 7,000 for another, and that was just in a matter of a few days. What do you think about projects like that and, and, and being able to tap into the Austin population to, to volunteer some data for these studies and take advantage of sort of the, the, the leading edge mentality of the city, the early adopter mentality, the desire to be first and weird and creative. How are you going to leverage that aspect of the population and maybe some of these new kinds of studies? I think there's a tremendous opportunity to do something citywide, a citywide um, registry, a citywide um, uh, testbed. Mm -hmm. But, and, and, the difference in what we need to do comes back to our overall commitment to improve health, and it always has to come back to that. And I say that you may think, well, that's obvious. If you're going to do such a grand experiment collecting data, of course that's going to improve health. The unfortunate reality is that most research forgets sometimes that people are involved and that people contributed. So this is one of the challenges um, that we have in, in, in a lot of the uh, uh, in a lot of uh, clinically related research, uh, medical research, is that we do a lot of experiments, a lot of research, and we don't keep in touch and inform and include appropriately the people that are part of the grand experiment. For us especially, we want to show an improvement in health. So whatever we do actually has to be tied to that improvement in health, and right. that has to be one of the big differences in every way in which we leverage technology, is that that, that last point, improving health, shouldn't just be an aside. It needs to be front and center in everything we do. And that, I hope, mm -hmm. is going to differentiate our approach to data and technology in Austin. Great. So I'm going to break it down into diagnosis and treatment and prevention. And I'm going to ask you to give me one thing that you're really excited about the Dell Medical School leading the way on in each one of those three. <laughs> Diagnosis, treatment, prevention, the end of the South by Southwest. All right. Um, I'm going to be general and you're going to hate it, but that's okay. It's, it's more relevant to the school. So in terms of diagnosis, we have diagnosed that the key problem with health is the business model of yes. health. So that is our diagnosis that actually the main problem... I actually meant patients, <laughs> but that's fine. I know we did. But in fact, that is the key diagnosis, is that everything else follows from the fact that we are not, people are not looking at um, how to improve health and lower costs and incentivizing folks in the right way so that we get the outcomes that we want. When we are ready to pay for improved health at lowered cost, I think we'll have gone a long way. So that's the diagnosis. The treatment is incentivizing a whole community to come up with ideas to improve care and then matching them up with payers so that payers pay for the things that they will benefit from. Seems like a no-brainer, but doesn't happen in health. What was my last piece? It was prevention, and I'm dying to see how you tie this into the business model now. Uh, so prevention. <laughs> well, I think, well, no, prevention is it's really, it's actually a key piece of our thinking on how we've designed training and education for students. So prevention comes from the fact that the trainees that we are teaching today are being taught not just on what they know of today, but they are being taught to be on their toes and to learn to adapt as new challenges come their way. Because the business model is a problem today, but I hope 20 years from now that's been fixed and something else is the problem. Right. So in fact, as our students go out in the world as physicians, they should have the tools so that they can address the problems of the day when they are actually out there um, practicing. And that, to me, is, is preventative, is to create folks that are a different kind of leader so that as new challenges come up, they are better prepared to deal with it. Well, I'm getting the signal that we have to uh, wrap it up here, so I'm going to just ask uh, one final question. What is your favorite part of the Austin cuisine now that you're here? I know you come from a great food city, but, but so are we, and what do you like most here? I could not choose one. I love, I have loved the food here across the board. It's not always healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to ask you about that as well. It's not the healthiest but cuisine. But it's delicious. Um, have you stood in line at Franklin's yet? I have not. Okay. That's got to be on your to-do list. <laughs> great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, um, Thank you. And look forward to seeing all the great things that come out of the Dell Medical School. Great.